What's going on guys? Welcome back to another stimulus check update and stimulus package update. Today in this video, I'm gonna go over unemployment benefits, the $300 per week, and I'm gonna go over rental assistance. Who qualifies for those two things and how much could you potentially get? Kind of what is this bill saying? We do have the bill. It was supposed to be 600 pages. I was ready. I was going to read it. Then the bill comes out and it's 55 130 pages or something like that insane amount of pages so i'm going to put this in a little spreadsheet so that we can kind of follow along but again i'm going to go over rental assistance and unemployment benefits if you didn't get a chance to watch my video that i did earlier i outlined who qualifies for the second stimulus check and when should we expect it so if you didn't get a chance to go out and watch that video that will be the first link down in the description box below so if you're ready let's jump into it all right, so here we go. Here's the bill. Now, uh, I'm gonna quickly go over the $600 stimulus check first, just because there has been a, a little adjustment here. So first, it's the same eligibility as the CARES Act, but there is one minor uh, you know, difference. So if you receive the first stimulus check, you're gonna receive the second one. However, the big difference is right here. $600 per child is for 16 and younger. The current bill says if you are 17 or older, you do not receive a stimulus check. You are actually considered an adult dependent. It will be for indi individuals, $75,000 or less, you will get your full stimulus check. If you're married filing jointly, and this is for 2019, this is all based on your 2019 tax returns. If you're married filing jointly and made over $150,000, your stimulus check would be reduced or completely gone. Now. I believe it's for every $100 you make over the $75,000 amount or the $150,000 amount, you actually make, uh, or it's every $100 over, you make $5 less. So that's what we know there. As far as the $300 per week unemployment, we do have some more information there as well. Uh, so I wanna bring that to you. And there's a little bit of an update in, in this as well. First off, it's going to be for a full 11 weeks. We have known this and we kind of expected this is what was going to happen full 11 weeks it actually starts right here on december 27th until march 14th that is good there's actually a note right here that if you begin after march 14th what this means if you go on unemployment benefits after march 14th you actually have an extension and it will go until april 5th april 5th is will, will be your new expiration date also the PUA and PEUC, both the uh, the new unemployment programs that were that pretty much were uh, put together through the CARES Act, both of those will be extended the full 11 weeks. Now, there is not something that actually says whether or not those, those full those 11 weeks, if you go on, you know, uh, the pandemic unemployment assistance, you know, for like self-employed individuals, if you do that let's say on March 15th, right now, it's expected it would extend until April 5th, but we do not know that for sure. What I can tell you is that this $300 per week that for unemployment, many are predicting that the amount of money that the federal government has set aside for this, okay, I believe it's 100 and, was $180 billion, that money, if experts are correct and our unemployment numbers increase quite a bit, which they are saying they could come January, then there's actually not going to be enough funding, not enough money in this bill to actually go the full 11 weeks. So they're a little worried there. Also, no retroactive pay. And you probably knew this, but I just want to point it out that yes, they did throw that in there. There's absolutely no retroactive pay, which means let's say you go on unemployment, uh, you know, January 5th, and then you try, you think, you know, well, it started on January or on December 27th, so I should be able to get that extra money, right? No, because you're technically employed. So they made it very clear, no retroactive payments there. Now let's get to the rental assistance because this is this is very interesting. This is a very interesting kind of turn of events. We were under the impression that uh, the federal government was going to distribute these funds. However, they decided, no, they are not going to distribute these funds. The funds will be distributed by the states individually. I wrote in here that the people are predicting there'll be between a three to five week delay just for them to implement this system. So every state 
is going to be uh, required to do their own system and have their own rules in place. The government has theirs, but every state could implement their own rules as well. So right now, what we know is there is a one month eviction moratorium extension that goes until January 31st. If you count the weeks between right now and January 31st, that's about five weeks away. Okay, it's a little over five weeks away, which means if these predictions are correct, these are not my predictions. These are predictions from other people who are obviously well more educated than I am and know exactly what's going on. They're predicting three to five weeks for implementation. So right there, this means that as soon as the states open up these, these portals to allow either the landlord or the tenant to apply, I highly recommend you go and apply. Get in as quickly as possible, get in the queue so that as soon as the money is available, as soon as it's ready to go, you can get your money for rental assistance or else you can run the risk of becoming evicted after January 31st. I also wrote right here, either the tenant or the landlord can apply for benefits. And the reason why they put this in there, and I put a little note that says, if landlords apply, they must get the tenant signature for approval. Here's the reason why. Now it wasn't said in this, in this 5,000 page bill, but this is my interpretation is the reason why the government wants to put a kind of a stipulation that says, if the landlord is going to apply on behalf of the tenant, then they have to get the tenant signature so that the tenant knows the landlord is applying, which means now the landlord, if they receive the funds from the federal government or from the state, they cannot get the money from the government and then tell the, tell the tenant, hey, I didn't get any money. You still owe me five months of rent. So this just kind of prevents fraud. That's my interpretation of the way that they've, they've done this. But again, they could have other, other reasons why as well. Also, we knew that there were going to be a certain type of person that was going to receive priority over these, uh, these rental assistance funds. What you need to understand right now is that these funds, when they are gone, they are gone for good. There is only 25 billion in rental assistance. That is it. Only 25 billion, which means there's not enough money to go around if every single person is going to try to get rental assistance for the past year. It's just not going to work like that. So here's how it's going to work. First, households that make less than 50% of the area median income will get first priority. So all you got to do, go to google.com, type in, let's say you live in uh, King County, Washington. So let's say you live in King County, type in King County, uh, medium, median area income, and it will it should pull up what the median area income is for a family of one or a household of one, two, three, four, five, whatever you are. So you base every single person, every single uh, family is going to have a different situation. So put that in, figure it out, and then you'll know if you are in the top priority or not. The second one, and again, it's, it's not stated in this bill that, okay, first, you got to be low income. Second, then it's, you are unemployed. Third, you just attest. That's not the way it works in this bill. It just pretty much puts them in there. So the other priority is going to be if one or more individuals in the household are currently unemployed. If that's the case, then you could potentially qualify as first priority. I also put a note that says you have been unemployed for the past 90 days. And the reason why I believe they put this in there is actually pretty simple. There are probably families out there that, you know, they're back on their rent and they've had a hard time. And what they probably don't want some, somebody to do is go to their employer and be like, I quit. I'm, I'm now unemployed. All right. So now I can go and get rental assistance because technically that's true. I'm now unemployed. And so they have to be unemployed for the past 90 days. And this is anybody in the household. So if they, you know, are part of the household, they count towards the, uh, the amount of people you have living there, then their income does apply. If they lost any of their income, then that would count as, you know, one of the priorities. And the last one, which I thought was pretty interesting because we were under the impression that this, to get rental assistance, it was going, going to be somewhat difficult because you had to prove, and again, you have to prove your income, but you'd have to prove that you make less than 50% of the median area income. If that's the case, there you go. 
But now there's a there's a provision in this in this legislation in this bill that says a tenant can attest that any individual inside the household is at risk of becoming homeless. So one of the things that Congress does not want is people to go homeless, not just because you know they lose their house and they'd have to live on the street, but now they lose their house, they live on the street, and they could potentially spread COVID. This is a COVID relief package. That's essentially what they're trying to do is to prevent COVID from spreading even further. What I can tell you is we initially thought this was going to be a 600 page bill. 600 pages was fairly good, it's a decent size, but now it's over 5,000 pages, like 5,500 pages long. It's a very lengthy bill. It's a lot of reading. This is what I got so far. I decided to put it in a little spreadsheet. This was actually thanks to uh, a YouTuber named Meet Kevin. He actually uses something similar to this, maybe even the exact same thing. So I watched one of his videos the other day and I just saw that was easily organized. I loved the way he did that. So decided I'll put in the time. I'll make sure you guys have all this information so that you can make the best decisions as to, you know, where can you receive stimulus? What can you do? Can I get rental assistance? Can I qualify? Can I get food assistance? Can I qualify? That will be an additional video. I'm going to try to break up these videos instead of making a long one, two, three hour long video, I'm going to break them up. So the one I did earlier, I talked about $600 stimulus check, who can qualify and when you'll receive your payment. This one. I just wanted to talk about mainly the unemployment benefit and rental assistance. We are going to get more information. I'm gonna read the bill a little bit further. I've only had it for about hour and a half, two hours long, and it was a lot to read. It was a lot to go through. So I will read more. I promise I'll you know do a little bit better, uh, find out all the little intricate details so that I can provide those to you. So I just wanna say thank you guys for watching. Uh, thank you for just Bearing with me, it's been a long journey to try to get here, eight months. Eight months we've been trying to get the second stimulus check and this next stimulus package. It's finally arriving. Congress is hopefully going to vote on it and pass it today. President Trump will hopefully sign it tonight and we can kind of move forward. So that's what we know right now. If you have any questions, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Again, thank you for watching. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on regarding stimulus and COVID. And I'll see you guys on the next one.